All right, here we go. We have Gianni Russo at Vlad TV. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No, absolutely. You have a, a very, very interesting story. Uh, not only were you uh, a character on in the movie The Godfather, but there's the story outside of the movie is actually more interesting. Thank, thank God for that. <laughs> thank, thank God for that. And we're going to get into this whole story, but I want to start in the very beginning. You grew up in Little Italy. Right. Okay. And I guess your mother primarily raised you and your two sisters, and your father wasn't really around that much. No, my father took advantage of a no-show job that friends of our family, the Gambinos, gave him and the Anastasia's on the waterfront. My father was a ladies' man, so I have to blame him for my past. <laughs> so he was never really there. And uh, my grandmother and grandfather actually raised me more than anything because my mother had her hands full, my two older sisters, and um, but which is a normal, typical thing, you know. In our neighborhood, I, I didn't know what was right or what was wrong. We had nothing to measure it against. And the people like O'Neill Della Croco and the Gambinos, they were a way of life. And even at that young age, I respected them and not knowing why. You know, they, they were the heroes. They dressed well, they took care of people. And they actually controlled their neighborhood. It wasn't the police, it wasn't anybody. Right. And I guess your great uncle, Angelo, was a, a mafia boss back in Italy. In Sicily, yeah. Well, Sicily, I didn't sorry. know that later. When I, after I met Colombo, I mean, not Colombo, uh, Frank Costello, he asked me who my, you know, do, do I know my uncle Angelo? And I said, I know of him. I don't know him. And because he was, he was put to death in 1947, they hung him when they were trying to take you know, abolish La Cosa Nostra. But unbeknownst to me, he was responsible for sending Carlo Gambino, Vito Genovese, and Frank Costello to America. And most people don't know it. Carlo Gambino came here already made. He was a made man in Sicily at the age of 19. Yeah, quite a history. Yeah. Uh, quite a history. So you kind of grew up in this kind of mafia backdrop. From and you know, and, and I did, and like so many of my friends, unfortunately, who are even doing life, most of them are dead. I always hung out with older people, and uh, I'm 77 now, so most of my people that I hung out were in the 80s and 90s now, and um, but it was a way of life. But they showed me a different respect. See, they would never let me into that life. I was around it, fortunately in so many ways, but I had all the privileges and the safeguards of having them support me and, you know, basically vouch for me all over the world, which is a great way to be when you're uneducated and not wealthy. <laughs> friends of friends are always good. Well, so you're growing up in Little Italy and then you wake up one morning around five years old and you suddenly realize that there's something wrong Health-wise, yeah. What happened? Uh, I, my my father, being a, a crazy man that he was, we only had two bedrooms, so my mother and father had one. My sisters had the other. So off the kitchen, they had a, a, a closet and they made it my bedroom. So I could only get out of the bed on the left side, and fortunately, the left side of my body got polio. And he said, I'll just give him a couple of aspirin. He's probably got a cramp or something. And my mother snuck me off to a clinic. And then the next day, the clinic reported my tests, and they came and picked me up and quarantined me at, in Bellevue for five years. Okay. So here you are. You're how old at the time? I'm, I'm, I'm six and a half. It was August 7, 1949. You're six years old, and from six to 11, you're in Bellevue Hospital. Right. And I guess your parents didn't really visit you at all. Well, they, I, I, you know, I don't know what kid in the world at six knew even how to spell or read the name quarantine, but I found out real fast, nobody's coming. 
It was terrible. I, must, I watched 2,700 kids die there over a five-year period, which is a lot of people. I think there was 45,000 cases just in New York alone. And they had no, no, no uh, vi va vaccine for it. So I became a part of Jonas Salk's experiment. And, um, uh -huh. but my, uh, the only reason I have my sanity though, is because a girl called Dolores Barone, who was a candy striper when I got there, happened to be Carlo Gambino's niece. So he said, look after this guy from the neighborhood. And she used to give me the extra jello or the extra pudding. But more important, before she left every night, she'd give me a hug. And believe me, I needed that hug. I was about, I watched all these kids. I, they, they went into a deep depression and they never, they had no, no chance of survival. They had no drive. But then um, because of a little transistor radio that she gave me the night before my birthday on December 11th, that transistor radio changed my life. Because that morning I turned it on and everybody was talking about Frank Sinatra because it was his birthday. And I found out that, you know, him being an Italian American, born in Hoboken, his mother was a barmaid, his father was a fireman. And I felt that if he could do it, I could do it. And the good news, I had the strength of my right side. So once you had some mobility, they'd stop giving you a bedpan. They wanted to get out of bed. And I used to drag myself out of the bed and drag myself all over the place and get on the rails. And fortunately, uh, I got out of the hospital. I don't want to tell your audience how I got out, but <laughs> I don't want to get the wrong uh, viewpoint of me at that young age, but...